the race to bring an all-electric pickup truck to market is red hot. Both EV startups and legacy automakers are pushing hard to capture this all-important market, so much so that sports betting site MyBookie even offered betting on the race. Even though the first to market will have the advantage, the most successful from a commercial standpoint is the one who will win the war. So that got me thinking, which EV truck will be the most successful? Hey everyone, Brandon here, and this is Time to Adult. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. If not, thanks for coming back. There's a lot of EV companies floating around right now, and with SPACs becoming more prevalent in 2020, many of these companies are going public. The popularity of EVs is less a passing trend and more a paradigm shift in the transportation world as this technology has matured and more people are accepting the realities of climate change. Tesla has proven it's possible to make compelling all-electric sedans and SUVs, and now the focus has shifted to the most critical vehicle segment in the United States, the pickup truck. 2021 and 2022 will see the release of the first EV pickup trucks, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on which ones have what it takes to be successful. So let's start with the competitors and the criteria. For this video, we're going to briefly examine seven vehicles. The Rivian R1T, the Bollinger B2, the Ford F-150 Electric, the Hummer EV, the Lordstown Motors Endurance, the Nikola Badger, and of course, the Cybertruck. This comparison is going to be very unscientific and based on information that is currently available. I have no doubt that the specs of some of these vehicles will change prior to release. Each truck will be judged on seven criteria, powertrain, battery tech and charging, autonomy and safety, utility and storage, appearance and brand appeal, production capacity and backing, and of course, price. I just came up with these based on my research, but let me know in the comments if there's some additional criteria that you would use. With that, let's get to it. First up, the Rivian R1T. Electric startup Rivian has certainly made a splash with its R1T and R1S. This company's emphasis on adventure and sustainability appeals to anyone who appreciates the great outdoors. Rivian's skateboard powertrain features four independent motors, each with up to 200 horsepower, and offering independent air suspension. This will be great for off-roading, and Rivian's prototypes have definitely shown that they're built for rugged environments. On roads, it boasts a 0-60 to 60 time of 3 seconds. The R1T's battery pack goes up to 180 kilowatt hours, offering up to 400 plus miles of range, which is pretty impressive considering the standard at the moment is around 300 miles. For charging that battery, Rivian is rumored to offer a charge rate of up to 160 kilowatts, which is good, but not great. They claim the 180 kilowatt hour battery will charge to 80% in about 50 minutes. Rivian will offer level 3 autonomy standard for all vehicles, and their sensor suite includes cameras, radar, lidar, and ultrasonic sensors. While every truck will have the necessary hardware for level 3, I think it will be some time before the vehicles will actually be able to do level 3. I'll explain this in more detail in a separate video, but for autonomy to work well, it's more about the data than it is about the sensors and the hardware, and I don't think that Rivian currently possesses the data necessary to do level 3 well. For utility and storage, the R1T should meet the needs of the average consumer. It has a 55 inch bed length, which isn't great compared to other trucks, but it attempts to make up for it with the 1.1 cubic feet of storage in the front and a nifty gear tunnel for storing up to 12.4 cubic feet of long thin items. 110 outlets and an air compressor will also be on board. It has a towing capacity of 11,000 pounds and can even ford rivers over 3 feet in depth. When it comes to appearance, I think the R1T is a pretty safe and attractive choice. It looks like a pickup truck, albeit one from 2030. Still, its design is far from radical, but still distinctive enough to turn heads. Rivian has some of the best backing on this list, with the likes of Ford and Amazon, among others, investing in the company. This bodes well for Rivian's potential to mass-produce vehicles at their factory in normal Illinois, as this is highly capital-intensive. Finally, let's talk price. 
The RT will have three trims and will start at under $69,000 for the estimated 230 mile range variant. Overall, the R1T appears to be a strong offering based on the powertrain, battery tech, and price. With backing from Ford and Amazon, I think this truck will hit production. It doesn't offer a lot of cargo space compared to others on this list, but this next truck should have you covered. Next, the Bollinger B2. Looking more like a military vehicle than a consumer truck, the B2 seems to be targeting Jeep fans and commercial customers who like utility, modularity, and off-road capability. Its dual-motor all-wheel drive powertrain offers 614 horsepower and has a 0-60 to 60 of 4.5 seconds. The 142 kilowatt hour battery of the B2 will get an estimated 200 miles of range, which is on the lower end of the spectrum. The vehicle will have level 3 charging and will be able to go from 0 to 80% in about 75 minutes. Autonomy doesn't appear to be a priority for Bollinger, as there doesn't seem to be any mention of autonomous features. But utility definitely seems to be where the B2 shines. Everything from the rear seats to the doors to the roof and glass are removable. The bed is expandable to 96 inches in length with rear seats removed and the front is a roomy 14 cubic feet. The B2 also has this really interesting pass through to the front that allows transport of wood and other objects up to 16 feet in length. Bollinger claims 42x4s can fit in this space. The B2 offers a 5,001 pound payload capacity and a 7,500 pound towing capacity which isn't bad overall. Bollinger is a new company like others on this list and doesn't have an established brand. They definitely seem to be targeting the more work-oriented segment, especially since the B2 is a Class 3 truck similar to an F350. The B2 is minimalist and durable, making it perfect for work sites and possibly military and law enforcement applications. I got serious Humvee vibes when I first saw this thing, especially looking at the interior. There's also something very aggressive and utilitarian about the design. It's set to release in 2021, but with a crew of less than 50 working out of its Oak Park, Michigan headquarters, I don't see this being a mass market vehicle anytime soon. The price will also keep this to a small market. At $125,000, it's the most expensive vehicle on this list. Overall, I think the V2 is a really cool vehicle that can make anyone feel like a badass. But unless you want to haul a bunch of stuff or start a minor military conflict, I can't see it having a wide appeal for the price and bare bones feature set. Now let's check out the Lordstown Motors Endurance. Lordstown, Ohio based Lordstown Motor Company is offering another pickup truck that looks like a pickup truck. Targeting mostly the commercial space, the Endurance is built for work but looks suitable for leisure as well. The Endurance powertrain is a quad motor system offering 600 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of 5.5 seconds. The interesting thing about the Endurance in particular is that this is a hub motor system, meaning that the motors are in the wheels. LMC claims this is more efficient than having the motors on the skateboard platform like most other EVs. LMC hasn't disclosed the battery capacity, but says the truck will have over 250 miles of range. It will be capable of level 3 charging and will charge from 20% to 80% in about 30 minutes. It will have pretty standard driver assist features such as lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, and cross traffic alerts. But autonomy is not a selling point of this vehicle either. It offers a towing capacity of 7,500 pounds, which again is pretty standard. Like the R1T, it offers 110 volt outlets for powering tools and other devices. As another startup, Lordstown Motors won't have the brand recognition that other manufacturers enjoy. But from a design perspective, the Endurance is probably the most conventional looking outside of the legacy automaker vehicles. It's a nice looking truck, and it would fit in with any F-150 or Silverado on a work site. Lordstown Motors' 6.2 million square foot factory in Lordstown, Ohio was originally a GM plant. The factory has a capacity of 600,000 vehicles per year, but still needs to be fully converted for EV manufacturing. Lordstown Motor Company has backing from both GM and electric delivery van company Workhorse, which has a 10% stake in the company. It will also be going public through a reverse merger with SPAC Diamond Peak Holdings. These factors are all promising indicators that this vehicle will reach production, but like most vehicles, ramping will be a challenge. The Endurance is planned to release in 2021, 
and will be priced at $52,500, which is in line with comparable ICE vehicles and inexpensive compared to other EVs on this list. Given the balance of cost and features, I can see the Endurance having some level of success despite not really being that distinct. Now let's look at the Nikola Badger. <laughs> Almost didn't include this one because of all the trucks on this list, its fate is the most uncertain. But I figured for sake of objectivity, it would be good to at least discuss what Nikola plans to offer. There isn't much detail on their website, so this one will be quick. The powertrain will be a quad motor system with up to 906 peak horsepower. There's no talk of battery capacity on their site, but it has an advertised range of up to 300 miles. There's nothing on the site about charging either. Towing capacity is said to be about 8,000 pounds, and the bed appears to be shorter than the average pickup truck, much like the R1T, but this is all speculation. From a brand and appeal perspective, I can't deny that the Badger is a cool looking truck. The designers did a great job making this look aggressive yet accessible, but the brand is another issue entirely. I'm not getting into specifics because there are plenty of videos out there detailing Nikola's woes, but it is going to be an uphill battle for them to gain the trust of customers. Nikola is in talks with GM to produce the Badger and leverage GM's Ultium battery technology. There's a lot of unknowns about Nikola and the Badger at the moment, but if nothing else, it's an entertaining story to watch from the sidelines. Speaking of GM, let's talk the Hummer EV. The Hummer EV was teased at the 2020 Super Bowl and got a ton of people, myself included, interested in seeing more of GM's first electric truck. We're about a week out from the official reveal of the vehicle at the time of this video posting, but we do have a few details. The truck will be based on GM's Ultium platform and will offer up to a thousand horsepower. I'm not sure what the heck crab mode is, but apparently the Hummer will have it. There's also no talk of motors yet, but GM is claiming a 0-60 to 60 of 3 seconds. Range also hasn't been disclosed, but it will reportedly offer level 3 DC fast charging up to 350 kilowatts, which is better than the current Tesla models. Hummer is an established vehicle with an established brand, so I don't see it having any issues selling in its established market. GM seems to be pushing electrification a bit more than most other legacy automakers, so it's likely that the Hummer EV will come to market. And based on what the specs end up being, it could be a strong competitor among legacy brands. Keeping with legacy brands, let's move on to the Ford F-150 Electric. Like the Hummer, not much is known about the specs of the F-150 Electric, except that it can tow 10 rail cars filled with 42 F-150s, which is one thing I've always wanted to do with my truck. Thanks, Ford. The F-150 Electric is being touted by Ford as its most powerful F-150 ever, which isn't surprising considering it's an electric vehicle. We do know what the F-150's appearance is likely to be, and it looks like an F-150. Ford is pushing the F-150 electric as a more powerful version of its signature vehicle with a lower cost of ownership. Ford will have no trouble selling these as the F-150 is the best selling vehicle in America. I talk about the F-150 and its dominance in the US market in my Tesla to 20 million vehicles video. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely take a look. But overall, as long as the specs are good, I'm fairly certain Ford's brand power alone bodes well for this iteration of America's favorite vehicle. Now, you know I had to save the best for last, so let's get into the Cybertruck. Tesla's entry into the hotly contested American truck market is both controversial and genius. The Cybertruck will be unlike anything on the market, and this will work both for and against Tesla. The Cybertruck will offer a single, dual, and tri-motor variant, and will be able to achieve 0-60 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Tesla will use their recently announced 4680 cells, high nickel chemistry, to achieve a range of over 500 miles. There's no word on battery capacity at this moment, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was around 140 kilowatt hours. The Cybertruck is likely to take advantage of Tesla's V3 supercharging, which will allow charging up to 250 kilowatts. Tesla makes the safest vehicles ever tested, and I don't see that being any different with the Cybertruck. Autopilot will come standard, which includes auto steer, active cruise control, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, and other standard safety and driver assist features. This is one of the areas that Tesla is the strongest, and I have no doubt that this lead will continue to grow. From a utility perspective, the Cybertruck will offer some of the best features on this list. It will have 100 cubic feet of closed storage between its frunk and vault, which is the lockable bed that has an automatic retractable cover. 
that you can walk on. The length of the vault is a respectable 78 inches, which outdoes most others on this list. The tailgate of the vault also has a pullout ramp, which will make loading and unloading a breeze, and it has a towing capacity of an insane 14,000 pounds, crushing most competitors. Like the R1T, the Cybertruck will feature 110 volt outlets and an air compressor. Tesla as a brand is synonymous with EVs. The company is arguably the reason this EV fight exists, and no one can deny the power of the Tesla brand in the EV world. The Cybertruck is probably one of the most divisive vehicles in history, and it's difficult to determine who it's really for. Part Blade Runner truck of the future, part meme, part post-apocalyptic survival vehicle. The Cybertruck's utility and durability will appeal to those who need a tough, practical truck, but the radical design will definitely turn some people off who have a set concept of what a truck should look like. Tesla is one of the most well-suited to bring their truck to market. The Cybertruck will be produced at Tesla's upcoming Giga Texas factory in Austin, and their new manufacturing process will ensure that the Cybertruck is produced efficiently. Tesla also has a $14 billion cash pile, so there's little concern of the company having the financial backing for success. Price-wise, the Cybertruck wins again with the starting price under $40,000 for the rear-wheel drive variant. The tri-motor will start under $70,000, which will be a great value for the range and utility it provides. Given all of this, the Cybertruck is one of the most, if not the most compelling vehicle on this list. The combination of utility, durability, range, and price make it, in my opinion, an option that can't be overlooked. But none of that really matters if you identify as Noted 1990s Toby Keith, and that's actually a pretty interesting point. The pickup truck, more than any other vehicle in America, is something that people tie to their identity. Truck culture is huge in the US, and it will be interesting to see how the electric truck fits into this. Overall, the theme for EVs seems to be an emphasis on utility even more so than ICE trucks. The current EV truck offerings definitely seem like they have something to prove, and to some degree, they do. With the exception of Tesla, EVs have a bad reputation for being underpowered and impractical, and that is the exact opposite of what you want from a vehicle that's meant to do hard work or go on adventures. 2021 and 2022 will be exciting years for the EV industry, and as the EV truck wars heat up, we will see which of these competitors has what it takes to emerge victorious. But what do you think? Which EV truck do you find most compelling? Which one do you think will see the most success? Are there other interesting electric trucks that I didn't cover on this list? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. This is a new channel, and I'd really appreciate it. With that, I'm Brandon, and this has been Time to Adult. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best on your journey toward a better tomorrow.